Welcome back, everybody. Just shooting a quick intro to the interview you're about to watch. Um, the interview was with Todd Welty, a grade three wastewater treatment plant operator, D3 drinking water distribution, and T3 drinking water treatment operator. So a trifecta operator, as we call them, uh, three threes. And the thing was, it was such a wonderful interview. It was super long that um, we decided to just compress it, into, or not compress it, but rather uh, edit it into two videos. So video one, what you're about to see, is um, a, mostly a career-oriented conversation we're having, talking some shop. It was a really organic, well-flowed conversation. And part two is going to be more industrial treatment and packaged treatment plant stuff. And then we're going to take that tour in part two. And what this is actually going to allow me to do, something I noticed is as I was editing, I could have asked him better questions and we could have gotten more in depth on that treatment plant tour. So I'm actually going to go back to the winery and um, kind of get a do over on that one. But until then, enjoy this video. Um, it does end kind of abruptly because we weren't expecting this to be a two part series. But at the very, very end, it may just kind of cut off. But I did edit in a little preview of what's to come with the treatment plant tour. So with that, I hope you enjoy and uh, like, subscribe, comment if you get anything out of this. Take it easy. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Todd Welty of Enviro. Um, we are here to tour his industrial waste treatment plant um, at a vineyard, correct? Correct. Yeah, this is a wine waste, and um, this differs significantly from what we've been talking about on the channel, which is municipal waste. Now, Todd and I have been friends for what, two years now? At least. Yeah, at least two years. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about us first and, our, and how we met. We're going to talk about Todd and his company and how it kind of fits into my scheme at my plant and, you know, how we work together. Um, you're going to tell us your story, maybe give us some in, uh, some industry and career wisdom for those who are watching, and then we're going to take a tour of your plant. Sound about right? Sounds great. All right, very good. So Todd and I met um, in a parking lot of a lab. Yep. At the time, uh, we were actually working, I was working for one of your competitors. Correct. Um, you and I hit it off uh, at, at that meet, chance meeting, and we, even though we were competitors we what we talked for how long a couple hours a couple hours just <laughs> nerding out waste of the afternoon you're probably the original wastewater enthusiast here everybody <laughs> but um <laughs> i uh I, we really were kind of kindred spirits anyway avila beach opened up um i took that job we needed contract operations help um and i just you know I talked to my general manager who was open to pretty much everything. And I was like, Hey, this guy, Todd, let, let's, let's, let's bring him in. Let's see uh, how, how it works. And man, we just, your whole crew, um, uh, your, you've got design engineers, you've got operators, you've got mechanics, everybody. I've never had a bad experience with one of your guys. Now, before I, we get to, <laughs> this may sound like a commercial for Enviro. It's not, um, I've said on this channel, I don't take advertising dollars. Todd is a friend. He's a colleague. And I, my district actually pays him. <laughs> I'm just a happy customer. Um, and so this may sound like I'm kind of fluffing him up a little bit. I just really believe in what he's doing. And um, he has been kind enough to take his afternoon and show us around um, this industrial plant. So um, that's kind of our meeting. Well, and if I can comment on the day that we met, um, I don't know if other operators out there can relate, but when you meet another wastewater enthusiast, if you will, it's funny how the time just kind of disappears. We talked about nutrient removal, BNRs, board and foe. We just started geeking out about wastewater challenges that we've both seen, challenges that we're trying to overcome. And it was just, it's really, uh, it's really refreshing when you find somebody that actually has a passion about wastewater, not just a passion about uh, having a good job with a good pension, but a passion about the microbiology and the mechanics and you can see it in Sean's channel how he has a passion for each piece and each part of water and wastewater treatment and I will say it is it is real in person as well uh, we we pretty much waste a lot of time talking about what was the last thing you proved me wrong on nitrobacters oh, yeah, nitrobacter yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. stocksilia it's a nitrobacter yeah, yeah. we had a we had a little bit of a debate in the district office yeah yeah and uh <laughs> You know, status quo, Sean was correct. So, yeah. <laughs> I learned a lot from you too. So anyway, <laughs> let's let's move on. I really appreciate that. As you can see, we get along very well. Yep. Um, so tell tell us about your, um, how you got into the industry, uh, how you started Enviro. Like, do you want to sure. take, take us, sure. however you mo most want to talk about it. So I uh, turned 40 this year and uh, I got into the industry when I was uh, 20 years old. So, um, 
I got into it actually mucking ditches for a, a utility up in the Sierras where we had old mining ditches and these old, we had 52 miles of old mining ditches and these mining ditches would move water to each of the different hydro mining locations, if you will. So they, it takes you to all these crazy locations where they just would wash the entire hillsides away. Well, PG&E took over those old uh, ditches and then they started maintaining them and building water treatment plants throughout this 52 miles of multiple spaghetti um, ditches. And so my first job in the industry was mucking ditches. Nice. We would literally have a pitchfork and we would walk 52 miles a ditch and we would muck the ditches. And uh, so uh, that transitioned into distribution and construction. So the district that I worked for had their own construction division. And in my time there, in the eight years we built three water uh, T3 water treatment plants. We built um, a wastewater grade two plant. We built, we did headworks, we retrofitted. We had 13 surface water treatment plants that we owned, maintained and rebuilt. And then we would take on other water treatment plants that the state would make us. So anyway, I did that for 10 years or eight years. Um, so I got to rebuild hillsides and and uh, build water and wastewater treatment plants. I got to do distribution systems. We got, I would, I even did the sheetrock and the plumbing for the water treatment plants. It was a really, really cool experience. But uh, being 6'5", the shovels are short, the hammers, I mean, everything was built for somebody that's 5'10". My back really started to go out and I looked at these operators and honestly, my opinion of operators was, hey, all these guys just do is push buttons, you know? I'm out here breaking pushing, my bu bu pushing buttons and pulling levers, right? <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm yeah. at the time a, a D3 T2 operator, and I'm like, you know what? I, I, my back hurts. I, I'm ready to start pushing some buttons. Yeah. So I transitioned from uh, the district, didn't pick me up as a water treatment operator. So I ended up going to a, a state position. And at that state position, um, uh, there was nobody that had the maintenance, construction, that like understanding of how you actually build the plant. And what I didn't realize at the time was the, how that was gonna transition for me to become a really, uh, and I don't toot my own horn in any way, but a talented operator. I really understood how everything underground worked, understood how the headworks work. I remember in the first month I was there, uh, I fixed the headwork screen. The headwork screen hadn't worked for years. And I showed up and I was like, oh, I read the manual and I go, oh, this is how it's supposed to work. But it, it began this kind of cycle of like, hey, I'm an operator yeah. that can fix anything and work on anything. Kind of like you and I was watching your YouTube videos. So uh, it ended up giving me a really fast um, trajectory of growth. And, and if I can interject real quick, Todd. No, so absolutely. For those of you who are watching, looking to break into the industry, he said something very profound there, and it's something I've experienced being skilled in the trades, um, is that if you have um, some supplemental skill, electrical plumbing, uh, some sort of mechanical pumps, anything that is uh, outside of ops, it's a real um, big asset because you can be multifaceted in the plant. Now, bigger plants, you're gonna have whole mechanical teams and stuff like that. Operators in larger utilities typically don't do those things. Um, there's union issues even involved in that stuff, but um, for smaller systems like what we work in, uh, if I could find, if I was had two applications in front of me and one person knew a ton of trades and the other person didn't and they wrote the same certification level, I would more than likely go with the one with the skill, um, the trade skill, yeah. you know, so long as they were a nice it, person. It's definitely, a need, it's definitely a need in the operations platform because yeah. we've got really highly educated people uh, going into operations now, which is great. Uh, we need that, but uh, it, it leaves a gap for the people operators that can, you know, actually unclog a collection lines or, or, rip, or dig up and repair a collection line. So uh, self-perform operator, if you will. What was, what the craziest part was, is that I didn't know that I had an aptitude to wastewater. I just was kind of following the river of opportunity. And it was about uh, so I went in, I was water treatment and wastewater, you know, like lots of experience in the water side, but I always was gravitating towards the wastewater side. How many people can harvest the bacteria, farm them, find the right bacteria, put them in an environment to nitrify and denitrify? Like that was something that just really excited me. So what happened was I worked at that facility. It was, a, I think it was a 
1.5 million gallon facility, something like that. And I got them in compliance and I just learned through doing. So then I transitioned, I moved out of the Sierras and moved here to the Central Coast and I worked for another um, district and they had been out of compliance for 10 years. In fact, this particular district had a $1.5 million procurement budget for violations. And you know, it's funny, I, I know the district you're talking about because, and we're not going to name it yeah, in yeah, case yeah. you're wondering, um, and I have heard, not from just you, but from others that were involved in that, that the highest level person at that place figured out that it was cheaper to pay the fines than it was to make the changes, which is wild to me that that was such a backwards mindset. And so you came in and you you started so, um, kind so, of changing things. Yeah, I showed up and the air compressors weren't working on the sand filters. Uh, the DO in the in oxic zone was a two. The DO in the aerobic zone was a, and we had really strict rigids. We were in PDS. Yeah. permit i mean our monthly permit was like a book i mean it was a super regulated plant and uh we weren't meeting half the regulations so we i started doing all the calculations fm ratios and just showing how out of whack everything was and the cto at the time was like no we're not making any of those changes and i said okay yeah. and i was only a grade two so i just said okay and by the time i got my three um Anyway, that guy actually downgraded his license so that he didn't have to be the CPO anymore. Oh, that's it's, an ambitious move. Anyway, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, this, it should it should go into a it should be a show. Yeah, it sounds like it. So I was like, the, as a grade three, they were like, "Hey, we don't have anybody, so you're OIC, you're operator in charge, you're making all the calls." So within weeks, I was in full compliance. In fact, two years later, after me running the plant, the procurement lady, we were in a training together and she asked me, she goes, oh, you're at the wastewater plant. I said, yeah. She goes, you know, I have this $1.5 million budget that I haven't used in a couple of years. Do you know what's going on down there? Why aren't you guys using it? And I was like, well, because we're in compliance. And I think it's worth mentioning, you know, I had really great uh, coworkers that understood and knew wastewater, uh, but everybody was so afraid to make decisions. They were so afraid of getting in trouble that nobody was doing anything. I'm not saying that I single-handedly figured it out, but what I will say, I was the only one that had the- You had the gumption to do something about thank, it. Thank you, yeah. yeah. And what I, they would say, oh, you're gonna get arrested for that. You can't do that. You shouldn't, and I'd always say, you know what? When they handcuff me, I'm gonna tell them, I was doing the best with, under the circumstances I was given. Exactly, and and you know, I wanna speak to that. Um, I, I, just to close, I never got in trouble once. Never all once. I got was praise, like like all that ever happened was my, my career just moved forward and created more opportunity. Oh, absolutely, yeah. and, and you're absolutely right. Um, I'll tell you the one reason you would get arrested is lying to a regulator about a really bad thing. So I had a coworker once that was worried about the guys in the black cars rolling up if he was doing something wrong he lived his life in utter fear of this and i was like what like the regulators i've met have been pretty chill even though sometimes they're a little overbearing they're certainly not looking to arrest you actually just at the last uh inspection i had um i had a team of three engineers show up and i was opening up like panels like hey you want to look at this and they were like oh we're, we're good and i found that like open up all the closets maybe not an electrical panel i probably went a little far on that one but but you know like just just showing them like i took them on a, this grand tour and i got my response from the lead regulator was you are the type of person we want in a plant we want to she literally called me a nerd she said we want wastewater nerds in plants <laughs> um yeah i'll see you in three years and so i found that they will actually come and help you um, and that's been my experience, but anyway. Absolutely, I mean, honestly, all they wanna hear is that you care, that you're doing everything you can to make it right and have a plan to make it right. So, so let's, let's switch gears from that segment of your life. So you, now you're a grade three wastewater. You're a T3, yeah, D3. Yeah. So your you're trifecta operator is, is how I've heard some refer sure. to it, three threes. Sure. Um, why did you leave? If you you were you rose to the top at that district, what was the inspiration for Enviro, and why did you go out and become a, con a contractor? So, if you can tell from my story, 
uh, I'm a problem solver. I don't care if I'm working on an engine, working on a wastewater plant, water plant, like I like, and I really enjoy overcoming um, uh, trials and tribulations. And there was this aha moment when I was working at that district and I realized like, oh, I'm really good at this. Like I, and, and it wasn't like a, we all wake up when we're six years old and we dream of being a really good wastewater operator, right? Oh, well, well speaking to yourself, <laughs> of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I did not think I'd be doing this. It was this moment of realizing that like, hey, I have a sellable talent that's needed. And so, um, and I had people trying to pull me out to do like the moonlight thing, but I knew I didn't want to just moonlight. Like I didn't want to like, you know, if I was going to focus on my career at the district, I was going to focus on that and become a chief, uh, become a, you know, climb that ladder, become a general manager someday. Or I was going to go the private sector route and I wasn't going to do it halfway. I was going to, um, you know, I was going to build wastewater treatment plants. I was going to help design wastewater treatment plants. I was going to manufacture and operate wastewater treatment plants. So when I made the decision to take on my first two contracts, it was like, this, this is where I'm going. And I, so much so that I actually co-founded the company with my business partner who had all he's got, he's a, he's a engineer, he's a CMPM, he's a, he's just incredibly talented and highly educated. And I sought him out. And we partnered up because he complimented my weaknesses, right? I'm great in the field. I'm a great troubleshooter, a great visionary, but I really needed that engineering mind and that to make those things a reality. And that's what's so cool about Enviro is Enviro is an operations forward company. Like we build and create and, and maintain things for you, yeah. right? For the operator. Well, so, okay. Yeah. So like, and from your, like to kind of compliment what you're saying about your company, and I know this is going to sound kind of like, oh, I'm a cheerleader over here as a commercial. I've just been on the receiving side of a contractor that is a really responsible um, and responsive contract operator. So like, I had a jam, I had a faulted VFD. I actually made a video about it. Um, I'll put it in the links below if you're interested in seeing us pull a pump. Um, uh, Wyatt um, helped me do that, Thank and you. I was wearing my GoPro and we deragged the pump. Um, I texted Kay. I got the alarm. And I was on my way in and I texted Kay and said, I need somebody in the morning. Um, I know this is gonna be a pull. And so she was able to start the coordination and they moved some stuff around for me that uh, Wyatt and I started at, I think six in the morning, we were ready to go. Um, and uh, we pulled the, thankfully most pump stations have redundancy. I had another pump, it was fine. Um, and that kind of response is very helpful. And so I think the field or the, the industry needs to be able to lean on that, especially with, you know, not every operator is gung ho making YouTube channels or starting companies. There's a lot of operators out there that have a little apathy, to be quite honest. And I think we need to change that culture. But until that culture's changed, it's very nice to have mechanical folks like Paul, Wyatt, um, you, of course, Todd, uh, Kay on the compliance side um, coming to help us out. So, again, sounds like a commercial. I don't mean it to be that. I'm just um, very fascinated by what you've been able to put together. Um, and we work closely together, so I kind of know all the players. Yeah, I can Shout vouch, out to Jesse, too. I didn't name you, but, you I know. I can vouch in case that we, we didn't give uh, Sean a dime. Uh, no. Avila has paid us more than, this yeah. This is our so. big storm reactor, uh, roughing filter. Let's talk in the um, biggest difference between industrial and municipal treatments. Here's how the water started. Cheers to the future.